Hello, I'm John Latimer with Alternate Beat. I'm here with Dave and Paul of the Mighty Lemon Drops. Right. Say hello, fellas. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hey, um, tell our fans, tell us a little bit about the band and uh, you know where you got started and how you got moving and all the way up to today. Um, well, in a nutshell, <laughs> uh, Lemon Drops formed nearly five years ago uh, at a small town called Wolverhampton in the centre of England. Me and Paul knew each other from school. Uh, from the band because we were bored with a lack of anything sort of happening at, at that time. Uh, we, we met the, well, Keith the drummer and the original bass player Tony, at a, we'd known for years as well, we met in a club, in uh, just a local club. Um, from the band, started playing a few gigs, uh, then we released an independent single uh, in Britain called Like an Angel. Uh, played our first London show, uh, got written about in the NME, those were the days, <laughs> and <laughs> a great review, and before we knew it, every record company in the world wanted to sign us, for some reason, and then we made our first album, Happy Head, in 86, was it? Mm -hmm. 86, first toured North America in the beginning of 87, with Chameleons UK, um, this is our fourth tour now. So we're doing about 80 shows over here. It's a long, about a four month tour. So it's, you know, we, we did one about, um, about a year and a half ago, which we did a three month tour with 60 shows in. But yeah, I've gone for the big one this time. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. That, the one last year was to promote our second album, World Without End. And this is our third, third proper album, Laughter, which and we're here on a very, very large tour to promote it. Well, this album seems to be really catching a lot stronger than the other past albums that yeah. you've done. I think maybe more commercialism. Was that done on purpose, or did you just kind of find a groove that really fit what you really wanted to say and it really yeah, kind yeah. of took off from there? I think so, yeah. I mean, we didn't talk purposely... Uh, want to go out and, and make a commercial I mean I don't think it's that commercial anyway you know like uh, but it's just a first a logical progression we've just got better at what we do and it's a you know it's a it's it's our most honest album I think so anyway you know it's a it's just the album we always wanted to make basically. we had a few problems as well because we've just lost a bass player he was holding his back a bit he was a bit you know stuck in a rut and he didn't want to experiment too much with the new guy in there we've, we were free to do as we wanted and do as we pleased and the four of us knew what we wanted and we went for it you know so it made it a lot easier for us that way. I see. I don't think I really meant to say more commercial. I think maybe oh, no, 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 no. the band has been around for oh, a couple of years, five years, five years yeah. now. I've seen the names in different magazines throughout the years, yeah. and and maybe it's the name has gotten out there enough times now that uh, people are starting to pick up on it right away instead of yeah. waiting to hear it and so forth. What? Can you tell us about how you went about getting signed and, and the process that, you know, you said you had an independent label, an independent yeah. record out. Well, what happened with us was initially we were... We were put in with this sort of scene, what was happening. There's like an indie indie breakthrough in like 85 in Britain with a lot of the shop assistants, the wedding present, uh, <laughs> lots of other things now. Um, uh, all these sort of bands, and uh, we, were, we were sort of uh, lumped in with all that. And of course, the record companies wanted to sign them because they were getting lots of attention. And I think really we were probably the most. Uh, we could one of the better bands. We could play better than most of the other bands, and uh, and we had, that that's how it initially started. Then record company sort of said, well, like, you know, God, the Lemon Drops have got much better songs than any of those bands, you know, and that's how it sort of came from that. And then Seymour Stein from Sire actually um, was in flew had just flown into London. He actually uh, drove about sort of a hundred miles to sort of see us at this small club in Bristol, and saw the show, and he was just like apparently was knocked out. And just said, you know, I want to, I want to sign you. So he said, all right. <laughs> well, Seymour is definitely a good person to have on your side. Mm -hmm. He's he's a heavy hitter, that's mm -hmm. for sure. You've only just got to look at the the, the roster, the label sire to just see that the man's got taste, you know. We use a lot of sire bands on this show because of mm -hmm. the style of the music that he yeah. uh, seems to we're pick up. We're actually signed to Chris Liss in England, which is uh, oh really? Yeah, you know, we came over here to meet Chris Liss in America, and it's like going back about four years ago, and you know, it just didn't work for us at all. You know, Right. Like the difference between Chris Liss and Sire was unbelievable, and I think we made the right choice. But we've actually just left Chris Liss in England after our third album. I see. So, uh, <coughs> I mean, I can't really say too much at the moment, but we label Liss in England at the moment. We're just shopping around, you know. Whatever. Well, there's a lot of new bands out there that who have not been signed to, mm -hmm. to the major label as such. And can you give maybe some pointers to them for their. Uh, maybe if they weren't wanted to look toward uh, something along the same lines, how would you, what would you suggest to them to 
Hope to, break to it a out. band. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, we, were, we were sort of in the right place at the right time. I mean, you can spend... It's really frustrating. I mean, like, record companies are just, like... The way they operate is all, like, awful and sort of... They, you can send a million tapes and they, they'll just send them all back. But if you've got the front cover of the NME, they'd sign you without hearing you. Mm. You know, it's just sad, it's sad you know. That's, that's the most yeah. important thing. And that, I mean... In that respect, yeah. that could really work out well. But I mean, persevere. I mean, if you persevere, I mean, if you're good enough, and you just, you know, and you just make sure that people are aware of it, you know, or you know, you, you should like sort of succeed. But I mean, I don't know. I can't really sort of speak from our point of view because it was on the road a lot, you know, touring around and just playing the shows as many as you can. It's obviously going to be a major factor towards you. I mean, mm. you know, but especially in a place like America. <laughs> America must be much a lot, like a lot harder because it's so big. But you know, you can like tour England in say three weeks and cover most of the country. But you come to America, you, know, you have to do, like a four-month tour to do. So, yeah. Try. Um, I was going to say something, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Try. well let's just change uh, directions a little bit here. Um, you, you play out a lot, and well, most likely you play out a lot. I mean, this tour here in, in the States, mm -hmm. I'm sure, is uh, would you say 40 dates? Yeah, oh no. 80. 80 uh, days, that's a lot of days. <laughs> Are you able to do any writing or any type of thing, like getting <laughs> yeah. together to put some ideas together on the road? It's, it's really hard because, like, when uh, you get inspired in that, which is great, you know, you sort of, um, because you're taking a lot in when you're sort of going to all these places, but it's really, I find it difficult when you've got, like, a, a, you know, a 12 people on a bus <laughs> all b and beers, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> There's no privacy. You, got, you, you, know, you don't get food exactly. So <clears throat> you wait till the, pretty much till you're done moving, touring, and and sit down and. Well, when you on. yeah, when you get home, you sort of thing, and you've you've still got all what what you've seen, you know, it's still in your head and all that, and and do it then. That's just a good, good time to write. You got all the fresh ideas. Mm -hmm. there. Oh, it is. I know. Yeah, it is. But um, <clears throat> I think that's what we'll do after. I mean, I, I've written a couple of songs since the last album, but after this after this tour. Um, I think I have a week's holiday first, I think. <laughs> a week's vacation and then um, just get writing and get want to get the next album out as soon as we can, you know. Okay. <coughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Oh, I appreciate cheers. it. Thanks a lot. Um, hope the tour goes well and yeah, tonight's cheers. show and especially since uh, it's sold out tonight. <laughs> I know, I, I tell you that everyone so far it's sold really out. Well. It's like quite amazing. Congratulations. Cheers. That's great. <laughs>